Hello everyone, this is Rick Grantham of rickgrantham.com. Today we're going to walk you through the three types of drop-down lists in Excel. Now, the first type of drop-down list is called data validation. And for the purpose of this exercise, we have another spreadsheet down here at the bottom called US GDP Raw Data. So this is gross domestic product data that just grabbed off of the internet for the United States. So it's just a data dump of data. And what we're going to do is select the year here and try to get that to show up in a drop-down list. So first off, as I highlight all the numbers, you'll see that this has already been, this range has already been named year. But if that wasn't the case, I could have just come in and said, let's name that year, enter. And now I have a named range called year. So with that in mind, let's go over to our three different types of drop-down lists and show you how we could implement those ranges for our drop-downs. So the first type is called data validation. Data validation is the easiest to get to, the easiest to understand and learn, uh, however, is the most limited. So let's show you how to do that. For, for data validation, we're going to just select in the cell where we want the drop-down to be. We're going to go over to data. And data, we're going to go to data validation. And we're going to click data validation here. Now, in doing that, you'll see there's a setting here, and in the setting, we could uh, there's a whole different ways that we could uh, end up creating data validation. For, for this case, we're going to go ahead and do a list, and the source, and we're going to have the source is going to equal that named range, which was year, and OK. So, now that we're in the in the cell, you'll see there's actual drop-down box. And if we select on the drop-down box, certainly all the numbers show up. But you'll see that only 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8 show up before we have to scroll down to get the rest of the numbers. Now, although that isn't a big deal for this one, you know, because there are so many numbers, there may be instances where you have just 12 items that you want to show. We'll say like the 12 months of the year. However, with data validation, you'll only ever see eight at one time before you end up having to scroll. So that could end up being a, a limitation. You'll also notice that the text here of these is very small. You do not have the option in the data validation option to change the size or the font or, or the coloring or anything of this sort of text. So in some cases, this could be very difficult to read. So that's another one of the limitations. Also, you'll see since we're in the cell, there's a little drop-down carrot here. However, if we're out of the cell, you don't see the drop-down carrot, which could be difficult for people who are doing data entry to actually know that there's a drop-down box there. But if we were to select, in this case, we'll say 1933, a way that we might be able to use that 1933 in a calculation somewhere uh, would be either just to link to it directly which is something that we might do, we'll say like right here, we'll end up with 1933. So that's option number one, that's the easiest. You don't have to unhide any tabs or anything else like that. You just go straight up to data, over to data validation, and you just go ahead and create your drop-down box. Another option within that data validation, and we'll show you that here, is the one that we have in place, is we could have put in an input message, which would have said something like uh, input year and we'll put the uh, make that the message as well and we'll say an error message or an error alert that we can put in place as well we'll say uh, you're messing up <laughs> make that the title and uh, also the error message and you'll see you do have some options here where it says now you could input the year. We could have put in a different title if we wanted to. And um, if the person was trying to input something that wasn't there, we'll say like instead I'll try to put in 1480, 1496 and hit the enter. And you'll see I'll get this error. You're messing up. You're messing up and cancel. So, so that's option number one with data validation. Option number two is your form control combo box. Now, this requires a, a, an extra tab within your Excel spreadsheet. It requires this developer tab. Now, as you select on developer tab, you may say, well, first off, Rick, I don't see that tab anywhere. Here's how you get to it. You come over to File, 
Options, and in Options you'll see Customize Ribbon. Customize Ribbon, when you select on that, you'll see there's a Developer tab here. Usually that's unchecked by default. So if we were to uncheck it, you'll see Developer disappears. And to come back up here, Options, Customize Ribbon, we'll select it, and it reappears. So now that we go to the Developer tab, what we want to do is click on Insert, and you'll see there's these form controls here. So within form controls, this one right here is called the form control combo box. So as we select that, now we could hit on the left mouse button and drag and drop and basically create an object, create a drop down object. And, and you'll see as I'm sizing this, you'll see I, I can size it outside of the size of the cells, which is one of the advantages of this. Right? We can make them smaller than the cells, larger than the cells. There's no way that somebody's not going to be able to see this. So let's make it a little bit larger than the cell. And uh, let's make it even, even larger than that. And here we're I just right mouse clicked. And we're going to go to Format Control. So in Format Control, you know, we could uh, change some of the sizes and the properties, etc. But what we're going to do is come over here and say, what is the input range? In the input range, we're going to say input range is that named range that we have. And cell link. Now, this is very important. This cell link here says the output of what is selected here, where do you want it to go? So for the purpose of this exercise, I'm going to say I want it to go to cell I11 so that you can see it. Cell I11 and enter. And here I can change the number of drop-down lines, right? So I'm no longer limited to eight drop-down lines. So let's say I want to have, I don't know, 15. And we'll hit the OK button. Now, what happens is whenever we select this, you'll see now there are 15 items that are showing up before we end up having to scroll, right? Which could end up being a very good thing. And as we select something, in this case, we're going to select 1933. And when I select 1933, which is number one, two, three, four, five. Whenever I select it, you'll notice the number five pops up over here where we where we told it to link. So we're going to select 1933. You'll see the number five popped up here. So what that means is now to be able to get this value over here, you know, we'd end up having to do some sort of a an index function to be able to look up what is the fifth value in this list. But let's go ahead and for the purpose of the exercise here. Let's just show you what that output looks like. We'll say uh, format control. And all I'm gonna do is just change this instead of I5, I11 where we have it, just change it to J. And we'll delete that. Okay, 1936, it changes to eight. 1933, it changes to five. So you see the value comes out differently for those. The last option, though, is and the one that gives you the most functionality is the ActiveX combo box. Now, for this, again, you need to be in design mode, but you do get a lot more functionality out of this. So in design mode, we'll go over to Insert again. Now here, we're going to go to the ActiveX controls. Now in ActiveX controls, there's another combo box here, so we're going to select that. And again, using the left mouse button, we're going to drag and drop and create it the size that we want it. And here we're going to right mouse click, and we're going to go to Properties. Now, in Properties, wow, there's a lot of stuff here. And this gives you a lot of options of changing the font and changing, you know, just a lot of, lot of stuff here. But let's start off with going to List Fill Range. So I want what I want that list to, to be filled with. So I want it to be filled with equals year. And link cell, or where I want the output to go, we'll say I want it to go to J15, so that we can see what that looks like. J15. And one of the cool things here is I can end up changing the font. So now, instead of this being Calibri, I can change it and say I want it to be, um, say, Impact. And I want that to be bold. And I want the font size to be 16. Right, so now I can actually increase this and have just a lot more, you know, just, just a lot more options at my fingertips. And instead of the list number of rows being eight, I can change that to, we'll say, uh, uh, 18. And that's it. Let's go ahead and close out of that. Now, 
Now, one of the things you'll see, this is still active, and it's still being active because it's got the little uh, the boxes around it. I can't select it. Now, this is one of the things about the ActiveX is you have to move out of design mode. So we're going to unselect design mode up here. And in doing so, you'll see the little boxes disappeared. So now whenever I select the drop-down box here, wow, it's got the new fonts and everything else. So whenever I select 1933, it's not going to put the number 5 there. It's actually going to put the value 1933 which is what it did. So you'll see that for each of these different ways of doing drop-down lists, you get different functionality. Um, you, you get the ability to play around with fonts. You get the ability to create objects that are bigger than the size of the cell. And they also have different outputs. So that's it. These are the three types of drop-down lists in Excel. This is Rick Grantham of rickgrantham.com. And until next time, we're reminding you to be a champion.